Soros' money is all throughout all of the radical left agenda that we see in this country, from defunding the police to everything else. Charles Stimson joins us now, along with Zach Smith, both from the Heritage Foundation. They have investigated George Soros' dark money network for years. Charles, I want to start with you. In your mind, what is George Soros' goal? Well, Zach and I lay out in our book, Rogue Prosecutors, in Chapter 2, the wide net of $50 million he has spent towards electing rogue DAs across the country and about $1 billion, up to $1 billion in groups that support these rogue prosecutors. And I think the irony here, Rob, is that he's an anti-capitalist. Mm -hmm. He's for the abolition of prisons, uh, and he suffers from white guilt. Of course, the irony is, of course, he's made billions through capitalism. Right. Uh, so I don't really understand why he's doing it, but he is doing it with gusto. He certainly is. His, his, Zach, his, his money is, is being used to destroy stability, to destroy law and order in this country. He, he clearly hates the system that allowed him to get this wealthy. Um, and he wants to destroy it for everyone, not just himself. Probably, probably the last person that's going to be affected is him with all his money. Alvin Bragg, George Gascon, Kim Fox, Larry Krasner on a mission to decriminalize everything. Think of how many how many people have died because of these people running these cities? How many more murders we've seen? A lawlessness. Uh, I, I, the same question to you. What is, what, is the, what is the goal here for these people? Well, look, like Cully alluded to in our book, uh, we don't know. We can't read George Soros' mind, but yeah. we can certainly look at what the people he is funding are saying. And they're very forthright, particularly in places where they think the American public isn't going to look, places like the Harvard Law Review, other academic journals. They'll tell you their goal is to fundamentally re-engineer the system, to tear down our criminal justice system and build it back in something new and better. And by that, they mean something where very few, if any, people go to prison, including including even repeat violent criminals. And if you look at their goal, their goal is to incarcerate as few people as possible. Their goal is to essentially enact a very radical criminal justice agenda that is wreaking havoc in cities wherever it's been enacted. It certainly is. And I, I think they understand that they can't, they can't radically change it unless they completely break it. And all of the suffering that we're going through now is, is just the collateral damage of, of their dreams, uh, the, these pompous, arrogant traitors to this country. Charles Soros recently handing the reins of his massive empire to his spoiled little son, Alex, here. Uh, in a piece by The Wall Street Journal, uh, Alex claims he's more political than his father. Uh, in recent days, he visited Michigan's Governor Gretchen Whitmer, throwing it up on social media, also visiting, and this one might surprise people, Cindy McCain in Arizona, which should disgust you if you're a Republican. Uh, hitting two important swing states before the election, the thought of John McCain's family in bed with the Soros family to keep Joe Biden in power is terrifying. Yeah, I wish John McCain was still alive and could read our book, uh, which is fact-based, because he, as a fellow shipmate, and I'm a Navy guy too, would be disgusted. Yes. Uh, by what's happening. And of course, Alex, who's done nothing in his life except inherit the money, yes. uh, has been at the White House numerous times, too. And when you consider the fact, Rob, that 73 or four of these Soros bought and paid for rogue prosecutors out of the 2,300 DAs across the country uh, affect about 70 percent of the population of this country, about one in five, yeah. their, their footprint across this country is disgusting, and they have blood on their hands because of their actions. Yeah. A lot of inner-city black kids are dead because of, of their goals for a reimagined United States where there's no crime, as if that's ever a possibility. Gentlemen, we've got to leave it there. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Josh Hammer joins us now along with Will Scharf. They are the co-founders of Jews Against Soros, fighting back against uh, his dark money network. Good to see you guys again. Uh, Josh, I want to start with you. Politico recently reporting that, that Soros is one of the big players that's fundraising these Marxist pro-Hamas protests on college campuses all across the country. And that probably doesn't surprise a lot of people. But, but how is it that, that we fight back against th this very twisted man who, who just has, he's on a mission to destroy kind of the, the, the sophistication of this country in every possible way? 
You know, Rob, you say that we shouldn't be surprised, and I agree that I am not surprised. That's why Will and I found the juice is getting Soros <laughs> last year to basically say that it is not anti-Semitic to criticize George Soros. On the, on the contrary, it is a mitzvah. It is an affirmative good to right. criticize and, and condemn this man who is trying to tear down America, tear down Israel, tear down his native Hungary, tear down the West. But apparently the editors of Politico are, su are surprised because they said that it was surprising that George Soros was involved in funding all this pro-Hamas anarchy that is currently tearing America university campus is asunder. Look, you know, earlier today I saw Will's fellow Missourian, Senator Josh Hawley, write a letter to Attorney General Merrick Garland saying that it is time for the, for the Department of Justice to investigate which exact liberal left-wing dark money activists and donors are bankrolling all of this nonsense. I think that is way overdue. I look forward to seeing, hopefully, when Merrick Garland responds to Josh Hawley. I'm not getting my hopes up, though. Yeah, exactly. Um, Will, over the years, uh, Soros' Open Society Foundation has donated at least $22 million to a San Francisco-based nonprofit that is called the Tides Foundation. That's another liberal, mega, dark money group. Their money is, is filthy and it's always dark. The Tides Foundation then funneled some of that money to groups who have orchestrated uh, the, these protests we're seeing now. According to Capital Research Center, at least 650,000 given to Jewish Voice for Peace, which is not a Jewish group at all. 710,000 given to Adala Justice Project, a pro-Palestinian group and another 132,000 to Westpac Foundation, a group that funds uh, a group called Students for Justice in Palestine. As we said last night, this money just kind of goes in all of these, uh, it moves through all these different places. Um, a major organizer of the college campus protests, like we've seen at Columbia, all of these groups are very anti-Israel, as we know. According to the watchdog NGO Monitor, Westpac Foundation pushes rhetoric that accuses Israel of apartheid ethnic cleansing and war crimes against Palestinians. Another watchdog called Influence uh, Watch describes Jewish Voice for Peace as a left-wing nominally Jewish group that opposes U.S. assistance to the state of Israel and support the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement against Israel. So Soros is, is I mean, they're funding some of the, the most anti-Israel, anti-Jewish groups with his money. I, I don't understand... At, at the core of this man, what, what is there? Yeah, look, there are very strong ties between George Soros and his network of organizations and actual terrorist groups, uh, like the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. I think it's long overdue for the Department of Justice to take a serious look at the Soros network and other left-wing dark money behemoths like Tides, like Arabella Advisors, uh, under the Anti-Terrorism Act for material support to terrorist groups. I think that's long overdue. I don't expect to see that from the Biden administration. Uh, but it, it's insane that these groups are able to get away uh, with funding terror, with funding support for terror, and with undermining American institutions each and every day. And, and it's, it's, it's even crazier, Josh, just for the final word, that, that, that the same money that, that, that's funding Marxist mayhem in our country is the exact same money that, that funds the Democrat Party largely. This is something we talked about last night. These are the same people. Uh, th th this, is, this is how the Democrat Party survives. And that same money moves into these kinds of groups just to show you where that party is at this point. Look, my buddy Chris Rufo wrote a whole book last year about kind of the 1960s era origins of the Frankfurt School and, and what we call cultural Marxism today. But the students who were students back then are now the leaders of the left, the American left and the Western left today. They are the ones who are calling the shots at all the foundations, at all the NGOs in the political class and the business class, in the ruling class more generally speaking. You've had this total merging of the Democratic Party's id and its ego, to kind of borrow a little crudely there from uh, Sigmund Freud. Hmm. But what's happening is totally insane. Will mentioned Arabella Advisors, another source of entity that has been involved in sowing the seeds of anarchy in Israel itself during their judicial reform debate last year. The Department of Justice absolutely has to get to the bottom of this, and if not, hopefully some state attorneys general will do so. Well said. Josh Hammer and Will Scharf. Gentlemen, good to see you both. Thank you. Thanks, Great Rob. to be with you, Rob. All right, we reached out to George Soros, his foundation, on the claims that are made in this new book, Arabella. Just wanted to get their side of it. Spokesperson telling us this. Scott Walter's book is more of the same from the Capital Research Center and its disingenuous efforts to undermine organizations doing the critical work of protecting democracy in the United States. It's often the loudest voice uh, that have the most to hide, and CRC's book is a distraction from its opaque funding networks, fabricating and amplifying misinformation. Open Society's grants are a matter of public record disclosed on our website and fully compliant with U.S. law. Okay.
Newsmax is offering Arabella, by the way, free with Newsmax magazine. If you want to read the book yourself and find out which side's telling the truth, you can go online and check it out.